Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Murat Karstolu. I'll be your uh, host uh, presenting from uh, East Bay, California today. Uh, I am joined today by our uh, new technology partner, Claudian, uh, Senior Director of Products and Solutions, uh, Sanjay Jagat. And also on the call today, I have my uh, teammate, Vishnuita, uh, leading uh, engineering of uh, Kubera for backup and DR functionality, uh, we'll go over uh, yeah, and we'll uh, have the demo together. During our session today, uh, you can ask your question in the Q&A uh, section. And after the presentation and the demo session, we will, uh, we will try to answer your questions. And again, after the webinar, you can always reach out to me and Sanjay and uh, Vita over uh, either social me media or also on uh, OpenEBS channel on uh, Kubernetes uh, Slack. Uh, before we start, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, data on Kubernetes community hosted by uh, Demetrios. Maya Data is also leading the efforts in uh, building a community for data on Kubernetes. And then uh, uh, Docs is a self-organizing group of uh, curious uh, operators, engineers, SREs, uh, running stateful workloads and data intensive uh, applications on Kubernetes. And uh, data on Kubernetes community this week had their third meetup with uh, Nihil uh, Chandrapa from Yugo, uh, Yugo by TB, another uh, my data partner. A great conversation on running a distributed SQL on uh, Kubernetes and uh, next uh, meetup will be held on uh, August uh, 11th and will also feature our uh, valued community member contributor, also longtime user Ren Lee from Arista Networks. Uh, uh, Ren and Demetrios will discuss balancing uh, high availability uh, with cost. Here is a rough outline of uh, what we are planning to talk about today, uh, creating backup and DR strategies for Kubernetes. And then we already passed this uh, uh, phase. Well, uh, stateful workloads are uh, more accepted on Kubernetes now, but when it comes to the uh, secondary operations and uh, securing these workloads, uh, a lot of uh, compliance, security, and then the reten retention policy type of questions are asked. So we'll try to answer all of that. And, and then uh, Sanjay and I will talk about our uh, partnership and uh, Maya Data Cloudian Data Agility uh, Vision. And we'll go over uh, some of the use cases, uh, but uh, at, uh, closer to the end, uh, we'll quickly, uh, we'll spend 10 minutes on uh, demo, uh, getting some workloads, uh, stateful workloads back up to uh, Cloudian S3 uh, target and also my use that uh, backup to migrate uh, workloads across clouds or uh, even uh, storage vendors. Uh, so uh, as we present, you will probably notice how Convoy's law has uh, manifested itself within our organizations, uh, helping us to form small uh, autonomous agile teams and data agility is in the core of uh, all tools uh, we built at, uh, at uh, Maya Data with OpenEBS, Litmus and then Kubera as a platform itself. Our goal is to make uh, uh, reliability engineers, SREs and developers life easier, accelerate uh, your pipelines that includes uh, providing necessary infrastructure parts and testing tools. And uh, 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 most of our uh, existing enterprise users are actually uh, providing that uh, feedback to uh, continues to improve Kubera. And then before we start, Vana, if you are not familiar with the Kubera platform, I want to uh, go over very quickly uh, and some of it touches to our uh, topic today. Uh, Kubera is a data agility platform uh, that uh, automates some of the day-to-day uh, -day operations and then uh, helps you to turn Kubernetes itself uh, to a data layer. But uh, at the same time, once you put Kubernetes in production, 
uh, you can uh, use Kubera to uh, get support and uh, Kubera can run on SAS and on-prem. Uh, functionalities include, uh, uh, of course, uh, Kubernetes topology, data visualization, and but also uh, a very uh, common uh, component and stack of Kubernetes logging and managed uh, logging stack and logging storage, as well as uh, data resilience components, including including. Uh, backup and disaster recovery, which which we will talk about more today. And uh, from here, so very uh, quickly, uh, I will uh, introduce this and then uh, pass the microphone to Sanjay to give us some uh, insight on benefits of uh, cloud and Maya data offering together. Uh, and then this architectural diagram you see, and then it goes back to granularity. Kubernetes, uh, we moved uh, monolithic applications into microservices and then each application has a different requirements and and some are replicated by nature by uh, by application like uh, uh, Cassandra, Kafka or, or uh, Elastic itself and may not require a highly available storage and in that uh, case uh, using granularity of OpenEVS, you get a, a flavor of local PV, CFS local PV, or even a, now a replicated local PV. But uh, for other uh, application uh, requires a block, uh, replicated block storage, uh, OpenEVS provides uh, C other storage engines and C store, Jiva, and uh, now uh, Maya store underneath. And then uh, you have all of that. And then once you also, uh, once you need it, and then uh, to add an S3 on object storage, uh, that's where uh, our uh, partner Cloudian comes in. And uh, you can dynamically in a cloud native way also use Cloudian uh, S3 operator to get a, a on-demand, uh, object uh, storage bucket using the CSI operator. And also if you have an existing uh, Cloudian appliance, you can expand the use cases by uh, using your uh, existing Cloudian appliance uh, as, a, uh, as a backup target for cloud native applications. And now I'll pass the microphone to you Sanjay and thanks for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Murad, and I think uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, I think uh, you gave a nice overview out here, um, and uh, I really want to start off with uh, acknowledging the partnership of Cloudian and Maya Data. I think it's great to work with uh, Maya Data along with the the doc community and be able to contribute uh, to this emerging trends of this uh, cloud native applications. Like you know, you mentioned this. And I want to just quickly highlight how the the applications are evolving. Like you know, these monolithic applications are getting modernized, and new cloud native applications are getting uh, built, and which are very distributed in nature, right? You know, and this is where uh, a solution like Cloudian, with its proven platform, is very relevant. Like Cloudian is an enterprise grade object storage solution built on S3 APIs and is already proven for various use cases um, in the existing uh, ecosystem, be it backup, analytics, Splunk, and so on and so forth. But for cloud native application, it brings in a unique value because now you have the ability to match a distributed cloud native application to a distributed storage platform. And like you mentioned, right, uh, give you the granularity uh, that would be required for different services to access the right storage through APIs and be able to leverage Cloudian through our S3 operator. We are working very closely with the community to release our S3 operator, as well as working very closely to integrate Cloudian into the more Kubernetes uh, framework, right? You know, one classic use case is this backup and target. And today we're going to talk a lot about data protection. So looking forward to it. Next slide, you know, talking about uh, data protection, right? You know, we, we all realize and know that data is a lifeline for many of these businesses today. 
right? You know, data drives a lot of this business and innovations and protecting that data is very, very crucial and very, very important, right? Data protection in this uncertain time, especially in these times right now, is more vulnerable for various reasons, right? You know, you obviously have a lot of uh, uh, phishing attacks and different malicious activities that are been happening in terms of uh, how the data is being attacked. But one big thing is uh, ransomware where you have now this malicious actors who are basically getting hold of your data and be able and encrypting it so that you can, uh, they can prevent the recovery of this data. You know, one of the statistics that has been come out of this thing is why, why and how uh, ransomware is becoming such a big issue is, you know, they are attacking the secondary copy, the backup copies, right? You know, it's very vulnerable in many ways. And that's where people have uh, all their assets laid out. And if you can prevent backups being used, now you have uh, 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 taken control of the data. So protecting your backup copy equally is very, very important. And uh, talking about protection, if you go to the next slide, uh, we talk about the challenges, right? You know, you have to make sure whenever you talk about data protection, you're ensuring that you have the adequate access controls. First of all, the, the, you need to make sure that you have all the bookkeeping done, right? So protect your data. Access controls for your data and records are done correctly. You have all your user rights and access controls maintained. You also want to make sure that you know if you are meeting requirements around GDPR privacy, those are all things that are part of data protection and you need to be able to comply with that. Um, the bigger part of data protection and the compliancy is worm storage, right? Where you are preventing uh, people from accessing and manipulating that data. In the case of ransomware, if, if it was a worm storage, what you now have is that, and even if people got access to that data, they cannot encrypt it, they cannot change the data, and you can still pre-protect it. So if you take worm storage, if you secure the access to the storage, and if you make sure that you, know, you have the right integrity levels, you now have a solution that allows you to meet some of these challenges for data protection, be it your traditional applications, be it your cloud native applications, be it your Kubernetes applications. The fundamental layers of data protection don't change. And that is where Cloudian comes in. And this is where, if you go to the next slide, why a lot of people uh, rely on Cloudian to give them the, the, the platform that gives you the robust scale of data platform as, as Murat was talking initially. You know, there are many reasons why Cloudian is preferred by a lot of our customers. You know, one of the basic ones is we are the single most largest independent object storage solution in the market. You know, we offer uh, native implementation of S3 and offer the highest uh, compatibility of S3 APIs. That is very, very crucial, especially if you're looking at cloud native workloads where most of these cloud native workloads are born and, and uh, built in the cloud, right? You know, they build on those APIs, they build on, on assumptions that, you know, you have very distributed access, you have write many, read many access platforms. And, and uh, all of those rely on standardized APIs. Uh, S3 has become a de facto standard when it comes to data APIs. And uh, with Cloudian's robust APIs, we become the perfect platform of choice for a lot of these workloads. Not only that, we have the ability to uh, access the storage uh, and serve file protocol access like SMB and NFS on top of objects that allows you to now um, connect to Cloudian object storage via those protocols, convert those file data into object and object into file, giving you that portability. So in case you still have legacy environments, you can still continue to use uh, those uh, uh, file protocols and be able to still take advantage of the Cloudian uh, distributed scale out object storage platform. Talking about scale, you know, um, when you're doing Sorry, Murad, can you go back? When you're doing a, a, a development, right? You know, you want to start off small. And sorry, can you go back to the previous slide? 
you want to start off small and then be able to grow that uh, environment as you shift your application into production. So Cloudian allows you to start small uh, and then seamlessly grow into that same environment, into your production environment and can scale up to hundreds of petabytes infinitely, right? Non-disruptively, still maintain your global namespace, still allow you to have distributed across multiple sites and so on and so forth. Um, and as we saw in the architecture for cloud native applications, those are those services are distributed. So having the ability to now do uh, granular multi-tenant uh, buckets where you have different buckets with different policies set up for different services allows you to now control how those services consume this storage and still serve different SLAs. Now, this, are, this is what makes the Cloudian platform suitable for for storage, and then you add features like uh, Worm, security, encryption, uh, hybrid cloud ability to tier to the public clouds, and, and various ways of protecting data across sites and site failures and data center failures. That what makes it a perfect uh, target for a backup target, right? And also combine this, you have now a unified platform that can be served for development as well as backup and, and, and data protection. This is why prefer people and customers prefer Cloudian. And this is what makes our partnership with Maya Data very unique and very advantageous because we have the same synergies, right, Murat, where we are trying to meet the requirements of scale applications and different use cases for Kubernetes-based applications. Talking about security, um, one of the things I want to highlight is, right, you know, security is not just the ability to do access controls. Whenever you're talking about the modern native and a distributed applications, you're talking about distributed access. So you need to have access controls. You need to have IAM integration so that you can have integration into, into different authentication uh, mechanisms as well as federated access if it's needed for your applications to access that particular data, ensuring that the right application, the right user is accessing that data. And then have abilities like encryption, worm, audit logging, so that you can make sure that, you know, in case uh, something is, uh, is not right, you can go back and check on it and make sure that who was this malicious actor and quickly act on it, right? You know, Cloudian supports uh, worm. Uh, as we said, we are certified with uh, different certification agencies like SEC 17A and, uh, and German and Swiss regulations that allow us to be consumed in the most uh, demanding regulatory environments. We are FIPS certified, common criteria certified, supporting the highest possible crypto engines so that it can be deployed in the most secure way and, and gives you a complete uh, software defined package with scale and security inbuilt. Going to the next slide, um, the value and how Cloudian is different, like I've been saying this again, is having the ability to support an industry standard S3 APIs and have robust APIs gives you an ability to now say that, you know, you can uh, move away from the traditional um, proprietary solutions and, and avoid the lock-ins, right? You know, all of your user management environments are built all your data management is built on S3 APIs. You can seamlessly grow your environment, be it your traditional applications, be it your Kubernetes environment, be it your cloud native applications, or if you want to do a hybrid cloud, you now have the ability to grow their environment and meet all those requirements in a single enterprise grade platform that offers robust security, access control, worm, resiliency, data protection, um, and then can grow as your workloads and demand grows. This is what makes Cloudian different. And uh, we are super excited to be working closely with Maya Data as we start looking at uh, ways of uh, uh, integrating more and being able to deliver complete value end to end. You know, security is very important as you might have seen in, in all the different various news articles nowadays. And this is why this particular webinar, we are very much focused on the data protection aspect of it. Um, and uh, Murat, you also have similar reports and data on your side that showcases why, why security and data protection is a, is a 
and then especially in the government and finance sector and adding uh, health into that as well increasingly we see these uh, topics uh, discussed and then uh, now we came to this uh, phase uh, second day operation backups are getting more and more important uh, and then this uh, increases the value of our partnership exactly and, and then from here, I want to also uh, uh, highlight these uh, two new articles uh, recently published, uh, one on new stack about uh, cloud native backups and uh, uh, disaster recovery on Kubernetes uh, as, as applications and the way we deploy them has changed. Uh, also, uh, how we uh, think about uh, backup is also changed. And then uh, we no longer take a full uh, uh, node backup or VM backup because uh, as Kubernetes schedules uh, workloads and pods and then also storage on and different nodes, uh, you cannot guarantee that uh, backup you take or a pod you take uh, backup on one node is going to be there in the, the next uh, 10 seconds it is all dynamically scheduled and also uh, the environment itself the infrastructure itself changes quickly uh, kubernetes version to version or the application although stateful workloads have persistent data by nature in uh, kubernetes they are also stateless uh, data has the state but application themselves uh, they can be upgraded and then that makes the backup uh, a bit more challenging and then that's where we uh, uh, with kubera and uh, backup strategies uh, come in uh, because everything uh, is from application uh, down to uh, all other components everything is all the flows are uh, keeping the application uh, first and we will see some part of it in the demo as well and from here, uh, uh, let me go over these uh, use cases very quick, and then uh, I will ask uh, Vita to help me uh, explain some of them uh, on Kubernetes, especially well, uh, cloud native way of uh, taking backups. We see a couple of use cases: uh, multi-cloud, hybrid, hybrid cloud is increasing, and uh, stateful applications needs to be agile in in these environments as well. Uh, as uh, data has gravity, so th that makes uh, migrating or uh, the, moving uh, applications across different platforms more difficult and uh, uh, actually backup uh, we will see how uh, how it is executed but backup uh, helps uh, to uh, fluently migrate between multi-cloud environment and also uh, another trend kubernetes and application upgrades uh, we see increasingly in uh, many user and environments uh, uh, instead of upgrades, actually, uh, uh, users uh, some, some, sometimes uh, this can be uh, even a, a daily uh, deploy new Kubernetes clusters and bring their application on top of the cluster instead of upgrading, because upgrades uh, may take a multi-stage and then uh, puts uh, production to risk. And uh, simple backup and restore scenarios. Uh, so um, before uh, diving into the use cases, uh, again, want to highlight the value of uh, Cloudian and Maya data partnership. Uh, granular cloud native workload and data protection is increasingly becoming uh, more important and, and enabling DR and on demand capacity expansions as well from cost uh, point, uh, both in uh, storage in production and uh, backups uh, as well. So, uh, because you pay for what you provision, not, not for what you use in cloud, being able to expand it on demand uh, when, when, there is the, when there is application demand is uh, highly valuable. And then, of course, uh, security, as uh, Sanjay uh, highlighted, regulatory compliances, HIPAA and other FIPS uh, compliance uh, increasingly uh, becoming uh, 
topics that we discuss with our uh, users. Uh, uh, Vita, can you uh, help our guests to uh, understand uh, some of the use cases we focus on with uh, Kubernetes and backups? Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Murad and uh, Sanjay, for taking our audience to, through the cloud native backups and what this Kubera integration with uh, Cloudian provides to the organizations. So with that, um, yeah, I would like to get into the use cases. And the first one I want to pick is the multi-cloud, uh, so which is uh, in the rise, as uh, Murad explained. So here we have um, organizations uh, try out their uh, apps and workloads in one of the environments and then then they want to move to the um, uh, the different environment uh, basically the on-prem clusters or a different cloud based on the data gravity or uh, uh, for whatever reasons like they tested they verified the things in the cloud and they want to move to on-prem or vice versa so that's where to the data gravity the amount of data with the application and then it's difficult to move the the entire uh, the workloads so here uh, the kubera provides by um, making these applications backup along with the data into a object location uh, like uh, cloudian so and then on the remote clusters the way we want to get these applications um, um, along with the data then uh, again kubera helps you to restore this uh, application along with the data so here the the point is um, uh, it's a cloud native backups where it's not just the data is backed up and then uh, user takes care of with the application but if the kubernetes as we know the application just comes up the pvs also are connected and so here the kubernetes takes care of populating the data when the volume when the application comes up in the volume itself yeah. the next one uh, use case is about the upgrades so Usually, we'll be having our uh, production setups in like um, like very standard or tested environments, and uh, as we it's getting in use, like more and more time it takes to, and then by the time releases are happening on the, the software or the Kubernetes side, but and and we want to and we want to upgrade the, to the latest ones to get the new features. But the point is like it 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 we, we need to the, take the pain of like going multiple steps of upgrades and instead. The new the the better way is like have a new cluster with the latest version or uh, the new or new version of the software, and then once you have this uh, set up now, our applications can be moved along with the data from um, the old cluster, I mean the older version of the cluster to the newer version of the cluster. So here as well, the Kubera helps you to back up the data to the Cloudian, and then from there we can um, uh, get restored to the new clusters. So the next uh, uh, use case is about disaster recovery. So till now what we talked is about like where uh, there is a lot of data is getting backed up and then at some point of time, uh, the users organizations want to move to the different clusters for uh, the various reasons which we discussed. But the point is like it can take some time to restore the data. So the uh, Kubera is coming up with a new feature uh, called as the, the streaming backups where the backups as taken on the source cluster. So now the destination side, I mean, there will be one more cluster where we are ready with the data. And um, uh, uh, I mean, as the, as, as the data is copying, when the new data comes in, that as well gets copied. And finally, uh, the shift can happen from um, by switching down one of the cluster and then all your um, data uh, along with the application is available and ready to serve for the users. So the next uh, one is a simple backup restore. This is uh, the very basic part of the cloud native backups, where uh, each each we have a lot of workloads running in the cluster, and uh, we want to just move few of them without impacting the other. Like this is um, uh, uh, so we don't need to backup the entire VM or we don't need to backup the entire data store. So we look at a workload, the volume which it is using. Kubernetes takes care of what it is doing and then um, uh, what the workload is using and then it backs up and then um, uh, similarly with other use cases like it can be restored to the different clusters along with the data. So in all these cases we have the um, Cloudian where we have a the, the SaaS version of it and also on the on-prem versions can be used uh, even for OpenShift and um, 
uh, internal to the on-prem can be deployed and it has a warm support where and also the encryption support so that your data is your backup backed up data is also safe enough with that i hand over to murad for um, for taking us with the demo thank you so much and this was really uh, useful uh, vita and uh, so we had an earlier session of a webinar for a different time zone i hope i cleaned up my cluster uh, so what you are seeing here is a uh, kubera actually uh, on-prem version of Kubera running on uh, one of my uh, Kubernetes clusters itself it gives you uh, overview of your clusters in terms of uh, storage activities. But what we want to focus today is uh, some of the use cases uh, Vital helped to explain. And then you can see I have two clusters. Uh, you can have more here. Um, uh, but uh, one cluster is on AWS on 117, the other is uh, on uh, GKE. So what I would like to show you is uh, uh, accessing one of my cluster. Uh, Kubera has a, a application discovery feature, which is uh, very important because everything is done uh, from application uh, perspective. And then uh, I have few application, uh, a small cluster i uh, placed it for demo purposes and you can see uh, it detects percona cockroach and why uh, this detection matters is uh, based on uh, based on uh, the application behavior you get uh, application focused uh, functionality when you dive into each application and some of them uh, it includes uh, suggestions and things like uh, analytics. Uh, just by one click, you can enable analytics here, and, and that gives you uh, specific Grafana dashboards looking into that application, which uh, is uh, probably a different topic. Uh, but uh, today we will uh, focus on the DMAS, uh, it stands for Data Migration as a Service and where you create backup strategies. And on this screen, you can see your uh, data history or a backup strategy. And, uh, and then this backup strategy shows uh, hourly uh, full backups and 10 minute incremental backups. Uh, status is active with the retention policy. And I'm gonna go over the new uh, po uh, strategy creation and walk you through how this is uh, configured. And uh, for, from the start, so uh, DMAS uh, backup uh, and NDR strategy supports any storage uh, provider, but also detects if open EBS is used, especially C store, because C store comes with uh, some copy on write uh, benefits, which makes your application backups uh, more efficient, uh, faster, and also uh, takes uh, less space because they are incremental. So it detects that this is on C store. And, uh, but if, if it wasn't, so you can actually use this backups and restoration to migrate uh, your application across different vendors, let's say, uh, was previously deployed on AWS GP2, uh, you can take a backup and then restore that backup on uh, uh, on Open EBS or uh, object bucket on uh, Cloudian, and 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 this this really helps with some migration uh, use cases. Uh, let's look into uh, the backup strategy now. So we have Cloudian as a target provider, and you can either create new uh, store your credentials or uh, use one of the existing ones. I am gonna need the target uh, address. So using this S3 uh, endpoint, and then, then you pick, a, a, of course, the re region where you want it to be stored, US West one. And I uh, wanna highlight these two here. Uh, so when using regular backups, not C store backups, you get this incremental backup intervals as well. So I like to take a backup every uh, 15 minutes. And, and then uh, since this is gonna be incremental, the restoration will be performed also as incremental and you can 
Yes, uh, if you have a hundred incremental uh, backups, the restoration uh, when uh, walking uh, backwards, uh, restoring will take also that many steps. That's why uh, we also have this back, full backup functionality uh, accelerates your uh, restoration. So meaning uh, every, uh, let's say every day or every week or every hour, every two hour also take a backup. And, and when you restore, uh, this really helps uh, then because the incrementals start from the full backup and after. So that reduces the number of incrementals that needs to be restored. So, and, and then uh, retention count uh, sometimes needed for audit regulatory purposes to retain longer backups, or uh, maybe you only need the uh, last five or 10 for one or the other reason and you can limit to save some capacity and then, then once you create uh, it creates the schedule and I want to uh, go back to the application here uh, look at uh, what is inside uh, the strategy so you click on the strategy uh, since this was created earlier on uh, our first webinar today you can see number of uh, schedules so they are each showing the full backups and, and then uh, since this was full hourly and uh, every 10 minutes after i have a couple of incremental backups here and i will uh, restore one of them but before we do let's go to our target cluster which is infra test here on uh, gke and uh, as you see, there is no uh, uh, Kakrash DB on this site, only Percona. I hope I uh, cleaned up, uh, otherwise it should just succeed. Uh, let's find our application again and DMAS and the strategy here. And we would like the latest full backup. And from here, uh, picking the again, latest backup name before we restore. Let me show a couple of other things. And uh, one of the needs and requirements of cloud native backups, it actually uh, not only the backup of data, you can see this cockroach uh, DB uh, actually it was a stateful set and has three persistent volumes and volumes are each uh, around 70 GB. And you can see the files uh, stored from the structure. Probably you can tell uh, uh, this is actually a Velero backup with our integration. And this means uh, you can at any time go to your uh, target location, uh, look at the buckets. Uh, this is, uh, I'm looking at the name here, B BGI, KG. This was stored in vest backups. You can find the backups and, and with their date uh, signature. And uh, from any cluster actually connect to this target and be able to restore from these uh, backup content. And, and the last one before we restore, I would like to highlight this also and resource list. You can see it's not only the persistent volumes, uh, also the configuration and everything uh, associated. Uh, when you take a backup, you create the labels and, and everything uh, matching that label is also part of this. You can see the services also backed up and uh, PVCs, pods and PVs and uh, everything related to that resource. So let's go back and, and uh, execute this. So our target was uh, infra dev and, and uh, actually uh, source was infra dev and target is infra test. One thing I wanna uh, talk about here, uh, which makes it two different use cases. So you can uh, restore the same workload on the same cluster uh, uh, if it is uh, corrupted or uh, extensively upgraded or uh, deleted for any reason. And that makes it a, 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 a traditional, a simple backup and restore functionality. But at the same time, 
if you lose the cluster completely for any reason or could be a cloud vendor uh, resources going down, uh, your backup is still available because it's uh, stored on uh, Cloudian and, and uh, not associated or locked into uh, your uh, specific cloud vendor. So you can use that backup with Kubera to uh, in a disaster recovery scenario and uh, recover it to a new cluster, which in this case, I'm gonna recover it here. So, and then after this, uh, you can see that the progress bar, well, uh, this part all depends on, uh, of course, the target clusters, uh, resources. So what uh, Kubera is doing here, uh, checking the uh, requirements, pre-flight checks, and, and then uh, uh, restores the volumes and uh, using the uh, same storage class creates the, uh, creates the storage and then restores the application, of course. And then this will now incrementally, so first full backup, uh, which was hourly, will be restored. And after that, my, because I, uh, rest, my retention policy was five. And then this full backup, uh, after the full backup, there are three incremental, they will be restored as well. It will complete, uh, Soon and in the meantime, uh, one another uh, cool functionality I can highlight here at the same time. Topology view, uh, so you can get a, a live view of things while it's getting restored. You can see we did not have cockroach on this. Maybe uh, worth uh, zooming in, uh, cockroach DB on this platform, on this uh, Kubernetes cluster. Now you can see it just uh, appeared here with the uh, PVCs and then PVs, uh, stateful set and three pods. And before I go back to application, so one thing here, uh, you can also do uh, many cool uh, tricks. One of them is taking snapshots and, and cloning this data here. Another is of course you can dive into application logs for troubleshooting here. Uh, my pod is uh, still uh, initializing here, but uh, that's also, and you can see uh, we had uh, Percona before, now CockroachDB has appeared on, on this side. Uh, going back to our slides. So uh, some of the other functionality you get with Kubera, uh, one thing, well, uh, friends don't let friends uh, store their logs on the same cluster. Logs are something that you need when things go uh, wrong or, or uh, also we use it day-to-day uh, -day for uh, predictive analysis of uh, logs in, in advance. But so uh, Kubera, uh, stores, uh, Kubera, Kubera has a managed uh, AFK stack and which you can use even with the free account. Uh, you can use Kubera to store your logs and when uh, in any in disaster scenario, uh, clusters are not accessible, you can access to your uh, logs. And on top of it, you can use Kubera to turn uh, your uh, Kubernetes into a data layer uh, by uh, managing, deploying, provisioning, uh, open EBS and with different uh, storage functionality, uh, breaking uh, cloud locking, uh, similar to what we are doing for the S3 part with our partner Cloudian. And, and then and this part I touched a bit, uh, topology, you can also get uh, into uh, log view, live log view and access to your pods. In the last part, we uh, talked about uh, data protection and DR. So you get uh, much more with the uh, Kubera. Uh, so uh, you can sign up today to get the uh, basic and then standard uh, subscriptions. And in the basic and standard, so everything in the Kubera and uh, what we are doing at Maya Data is uh, uh, based on uh, open source and we also contribute to many other CNCF projects. So Maya Data is one of the top uh, five uh, and one one of the only, I think, uh, 
independent uh, companies contributing to uh, CNCF, uh, top contributors. Uh, so you, with the basic uh, functionality, basic subscription, you get pre-flight checks and uh, provisioning open EBS, everything that you would need to have a successful POC. Uh, and, and then a standard adds on top of it with topology, we use uh, active health checks, multi-vendor data management and backups like uh, Cloudian uh, backend support, and as well as uh, uh, additional functionality getting soon like CSI lifecycle management. Uh, it is not only open EBS, so in, in uh, Kubernetes, we see mixed environment, you need to take care of your AWS uh, volumes or uh, GCP persistent volumes. So uh, maintaining CSI drivers becomes a challenge too and Kubera will take care of that too. And then with the enterprise, which most of our uh, uh, large enterprise uh, users are, you get an air gap and on-prem a unlimited team size, uh, longer log retention and additional uh, enterprise functionality like Active Directory and authentication. So wanna, uh, uh, before we close, wanna talk about uh, KubeCon as well. Uh, uh, so we'll be uh, at KubeCon and, and this time uh, virtual as you know, uh, uh, will be on our booth and uh, to available to chat and give you a demo if you have any question between August 17th and 20th. Uh, and we'll also have a cool uh, giveaways and I would like to also, uh, yeah, uh, not to uh, give a spoiler, but I think it will be published uh, soon. Uh, we will have really cool uh, giveaways for uh, new users signing up uh, Kubera standard. From here, uh, wanna, uh, Take your questions and so uh, one question I see uh, how is uh, so how is uh, okay going through the list. What's the most common uh, way of uh, uh, running Cloudian in a cloud native environment on uh, on-prem? Yeah, I think uh, Murad, I think there are two ways to do this. One is you can have Cloudian running um, on dedicated hardware, or you can have Cloudian running in a VM environment and use the operator to uh, do bucket claims. We will soon be releasing an ability to run Cloudian in a container and a Kubernetes operator to provision Cloudian as containers and be able to scale containers. Uh, you'll see announcements coming in the next few weeks around that. That's cool. Giving a minute for additional questions if you have. If we don't have any additional questions, I think we can wrap up our webinar. And uh, again, uh, uh, we would like uh, to see everyone uh, join our uh, data on Kubernetes uh, meetups as well as uh, uh, KubeCon. Uh, and then uh, you will see cool demos and we'll have great uh, giveaways. Thank you. Thank you, the My Data team, Murad, and uh, the rest of the team, Veta, and uh, Vishnu, and uh, looking forward to a lot more uh, working closely. So thank you very much for everybody who joined. Um, please reach out if there's anything else that you need. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you.